Empire Festival was probably the best festival in London, definitely, certainly at the time. Yeah. Uh, it's like self-made by the people that played there. It's just, mm -hmm. as they said, I mean, yeah, it's like the, the title for the first one was "You Can't Kill the Spirit." Most are having it hard. Scattered debris on a dismal shore, washed up from a sunny day. It was the best day out I had from 1991 to 1994. Exactly. That's all I could really say because this is so much. <laughs> and there's also the fact it was free. Everyone likes a free festival. It started off really small, really tiny. Uh, it was just organised mostly by. I mean, yeah, that's one of the things about which made it a very special festival is that it was basically organised by the bands that were going to be playing. Yeah. But it was mostly for unsigned bands and, and little known bands uh, around the area. Everyone was welcome there. It didn't matter what your sex was, what your colour was, whether you're punk, and gold, whatever, straight, didn't matter. Everyone was welcome. I think it was just. There was just a. Backlash against the establishment. There were lots of different styles of music. There seemed to be then the whole mixture, if you like, of musical styles. And I think about then it all started amalgamating. Rock got in with rap and a bit of dance, and it all started coming together nicely. And from that, from sort of like very tiny beginnings, it kind of grew to be the biggest one day festival in London. I think by the sixth one, I think they. They had a fun night, about 30,000 people. I just, lots of people came from everywhere, all over London, to come to Newcastle. Um, and it was well, it was well organised as well. It was, it was definitely a sort of like, kind of a triangle. It was sort of like stood on three legs. There was the actual festival itself and the organisers there, and then there was the dew drop, and then there was the venue. And what's happened in the, in the intervening time is that. The venue has gone from being a place where they would just have live bands playing original music to a place which exclusively plays tribute bands now, where yeah, they do nothing else. So part of the festival would actually be the festival in the park and then after that there would be sort of like bands that's playing, you know, a big sort of like bash up at the venue afterwards, yeah. And then also, you know, the dew drop would open up after sort of like they'd been shut all day and sort of like just serving outside and then people would be in the pub could see it grow from year to year, you know, it's sort of like practically the attendance doubled every year. Definitely green. It had basically outgrown that space. Um, Lewis and Council were unable to find another venue for it. I think what it was in the end is the council just decided that they didn't want something that big happening. And it was the same year that the Criminal Justice Act came into force. And the, uh, the general attitude is that what they did is they used that as a lever to basically shut it down. So, unfortunately, yeah, another venue couldn't be found for it. And, uh, it basically died a death, unfortunately.